June 13th, 2022. <laughs> You're listening to No Blast with Don and Kevin. I'm Kevin. And I'm Don. And yeah, it's- middle of June. It's about to get really hot. I guess a big storm's going to come tonight. That's what they say. I don't know if it's really going to happen, but it's supposed to get like 94 degrees on Wednesday, which in Cleveland yeah. is just miserable. Because it's probably be humid. Yeah, humid is all else and dumb. Yeah. Uh, so not looking forward to that. And no. But by the weekend, I guess it'll be a little bit better and be like in the mid 70s. So that'll be good if that's true. Who knows? It's only Monday. Right. And anything they predict for the weekend is a lie. Um, Right? Yeah. So um, tomorrow, I fast. No eating. Just oh. clear liquids and jello. No, For nothing, religious purposes. Nothing red. No, because Wednesday is the colonoscopy. There it is. They're going to put the <clears throat> camera up my butt and look around for shit. Yeah. Literally. Nice. If there's any uh, polyps. Get them. Remove them. Monsters, and then, fairies. Uh, hopefully nothing else. Hopefully there's no problems. I, mean, <laughs> I, I tend to poop okay, I think. I don't see yeah. any issues. So knock on wood. None of that's going to happen. And then th- Thursday, I've got the MRI for my oh boy spine. Hasn't been terrible. I've been able to do mostly everything that I normally do, other than I'm not lifting anything really heavy. Right. Um I, it's still irritating, you know what I mean? Like it's, I still feel it, but it's it's milder every day, just a little bit every day, but it's still there. My only real concern, like I wouldn't be too concerned because the pain's kind of going away, but my bottom of my right forearm is still pretty numb, <laughs> so there's still some sort of compression on the nerve. We'll see what it looks like um, after that, and then yeah, and then doing some uh, traveling to New Hampshire. On the weekend, um, <laughs> for a couple of days, so full week for Kevin. I also sure. um, I haven't posted up any of my uh, will it work videos because lately I um, had the back problem and sitting at the computer has just been no good. I don't even do it for work. I've been working out of my bed for work because yeah. I can prop up all the pillows and everything. And right, kind of sit there. It's the joy of working from home. Um, but, uh, I do still have a bunch to add, but I did ultimately do what I said I was going to do. I made a little collage of, uh, consoles that I'm just not going to get to because I ended up cleaning out both of these rooms that I was using. Um, one was like a secondary office that I used for work and, um, the other one was all game console stuff. So I cleaned all that out and painted those rooms and, um, so that's done. And then, um, talk to these guys about my pool, right? So I got an above ground pool for people that don't know, came with the house. And yes, it I, did. And when I bought the house, it had a deck. It wasn't a very good deck, but it was a deck and it surrounded the pool. So mm-hmm. over time I replaced the deck <laughs> in two stages. I replaced the part that's right behind the house. And then I replaced this bigger part that wrapped around the pool and of course, I got the pool working and everything, and been here eleven years, and the pool worked for about Never ten of it. them. <laughs> and uh, then it just basically the pool—it's really old. I mean, it, you know, I came with the house, probably ten years older than that, so it was probably at least a twenty-year-old pool. And um, so it's just falling apart. So I talked to this guy that works at like Metro Pools, and they said they they cannot replace the pool with the deck around it like that plumber hmm. right so oh, yeah i'm thinking well you know that deck was expensive to put in but um, oh yeah it's like i don't know uh like there's nothing else i can do and so i'm probably just gonna have to i'm i'm making a mental decision i'm gonna have to tear out that deck and i'm gonna tear out that pool and i'm just gonna return the land to grass I'm going to have there a landscaper go. come out and just make it grass and no well, more, could, none of that. Couldn't you just keep, couldn't you get rid of the pool and just keep the deck? That'd be a big hole in the middle As, of it. Well, I mean, I could, try I could ask it. a deck guy to come in and put boards in the middle of it and be like a big dance floor. But I just, I, oh, I, I, 
it would be like a donut. <laughs> yeah. Would it be like a donut if he took the pole out? I mean, I, yeah, I guess it could be, but I mean, it would just be ridiculous. Um, I, I have thought about all these okay. things. I thought about yeah, yeah, yeah. turning it into like a Zen garden, like kind of planting some flowers and having some stairs that went down into it, you know? Yeah. And then I thought about, I could put a big trampoline in there and have a trampoline instead of a pool. Um, right. I've thought of all of these things, but I just feel as though like, um, the, you know, it, the deck will over time, of course, fall apart it's got a long ways to go but it would yeah and and so it's kind of like i'll just accelerate it and get rid of it now i'm not doing it this year um because i got this drainage easement thing that has to happen because of the city and that's going to be expensive so i'm doing that and then maybe next year i'll have them come and rip it out now it's possible over the course of a year maybe something will happen maybe somebody will look at it and be like yeah i can do i can replace that you know what i mean and then maybe i keep right. it but yeah, I don't know. I, I did think about doing things like maybe keeping half of the rear of the deck, like cutting it off. Yeah. And, you know, keeping this, like part of it, but. Because I never go in your backyard. So I, I, it's like I've been in your backyard, but I think it was like before that deck was built. Right. So it's like I couldn't, re I couldn't necessarily remember what it looked like. It was like if it was a half, it was, you know, if it went, went around like half of the pool, I'd be like, oh, yeah, you could keep that and, you know, do something. You could still have, you know, you could have a place to hang out people to sit but right. nobody nobody's coming over your place so it doesn't matter no, right i mean for, for the most You're part lonely. Right, yeah and so <laughs> it's kind of just like um i've had it now for 10 years and there's been no pool party <laughs> there's been no party You're right um nothing's right. gonna happen with that it's just gonna rot over time i mean yeah. you know so it's kind of um i'll i'll, I'll just get rid of it at some point here it's a bummer but it, it's one of those things it's just yeah whatever you know um what are you gonna do so uh yeah so uh, how was your week anything exciting uh, in the world of death um probably and i probably just don't remember still working but there was a, it, yeah I'm, I'm still there and i'm still you know hanging on uh, thinking about yeah me. i mean Oh, uh, every day, <laughs> every day. It's just like, I go in there and I tell the one dude, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, please don't go. He's like, you're the only one here that like still works <laughs> or like, you know, everybody else is just like lazy and stupid and stuff. And it's like me and this dude, like we get stuff done. You know what I mean? It's like, we get in there, we get the work done. That's good. And I, and he's like, please don't leave. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's not really up to you. Um, <laughs> you know, like, but uh, yeah, I'm still there. Um, what I wanted to, what I meant to tell you last week was, uh, this is a story. It's not about me. It's about Sophie. Oh, okay. Uh, that's for those who don't know, that's my daughter, everybody, my daughter, Sophia, she's 16 now and she's, and she's, and she's doing things. She's, she's becoming a young adult. Right. Sure. And, and I'm, and I'm trying to deal with it and all that stuff and whatever it's, I'm, I'm the cool hip dad so I can handle it. So she tells me the story. She went, she went to her mom's house and she tells me the story about how she went, her and her friend went to a concert. And I was like, oh, really? And she goes, yeah. She goes, oh, my God, you won't believe what it was like. And I go, well, what do you mean? And so, she, and I won't go into the whole thing, but uh, basically it was a concert in Columbus that her mother drove her, her, her and her friend to and, like, dropped them off. And then her mom, like, went and saw her friends or whatever in Columbus. You know, was hanging out and waiting for them to get done and, and then picked them up and drove them home. So... She's like, so we get to this concert and she goes into this whole story because it started raining and it's an outdoor venue. And then it's like, you can't leave, but you got to be there. And there's all this stuff. And she's, and she's going through this whole story. And uh, she, it's just one little thing after, and I'm sitting there laughing because she's like, and then we got stuck in the rain, but then there was this creepy guy and we were like, can we buy your umbrella for 20 bucks? And it's, it's like all this, all this stuff's going on. And she's like, and, and then the show started late and we didn't even get to hear our favorite song. And mom's out in the parking lot and she's texting us and she's like, you need to be out here now and you need to get out here. Uh, you know, I've waited too long and, and she's, like, she's like yelling at him and stuff. And, uh, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is insane. There's like, you know, there's like a whole thing going on. I'm like, you're only 16 and, da, 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 da. and, 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 and she's like, yeah, it was kind of, it was like a, it was like a, 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 it was like a crazy adventure. And she goes, and we got back to mom's truck and then she was driving us back home back here. And, it, you know, she's like, and then we fell asleep in the truck and she, mom had the air conditioning on and we were all wet. That's how, that's how bitchy her mom is. She's, she's so petty that the kids were, 
wet because they got stuck in the rain because it rained at this concert and delayed it. And so she put the air conditioning on <laughs> while they were trying to sleep in the truck on the way back because she didn't want them to sleep. And she was mad because they made her stay longer than she had to. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah. So needless to say, uh, she's like, Oh yeah, it was, it was, it, she's like, uh, it was like an adventure and all this stuff. And the first thing I thought of was monsters of rock. <laughs> And I just and I just went. Yes. I went. You know what? And I, it just popped in my head while she was telling me the story, and I just stopped and I looked. At her, I go. You know what? You got your own monsters or rock story. Yeah. Like like because we. I was like fifteen. We were like fifteen, sixteen. Right. When when Oz's aunt dropped me and him off at the Akron Rubber Bowl, <laughs> and we really didn't. Uh, I mean, yeah, we had a plan that Cease was going to drive us home, but did we really know? We, we, uh, we didn't really know. He didn't even know how to get exactly. Us home. Right. So it was just, it was just kind of, I was like, I go, that's funny. And she goes, that's what I thought of. She goes, when we were in the middle of it, she goes, I thought about you. Cause I've told her the story. About right. Sure. And she's like, and I thought, she's like, I thought about you and all your friends uh, going to that concert that you told us about. And I was just like, Oh my God. You, I was like, Oh, look at it. It's the circle of life. My, my daughter had her own very yeah. own At least she got rain. rock experience. I, we talk about this, and I know the oh, audience yeah. is sick of it. Yeah. But I, I'll just say it for because anytime it comes up, I always just got to say it. Stupid hot, man. Hot as day <laughs> ever. Yeah. Never been. When we were talking hot about ever. So dumb. We were talking about how we we're talking about how bad it's going to be at 94 degrees. It was 102. It was so, in the Akron Rubber Bowl. It was no cover. No, no cut. No just, trees. No breeze. No, and nothing to drink <laughs> for most of yeah. the time you were there because the line was too long. Just un. And I was fifteen. I didn't have any money. I no. spent all my money on the ticket. Right? No, it. Dude, fifteen, sixteen, something like that. Sixteen. Horrible. All right. You yeah, know, they all. Heard but it. I just thought, I, uh, yeah, they've all heard that. But I just thought it was. I just thought it was interesting that she's telling me this whole big elaborate story, and I was just like, it sounds just like the monsters rock. Funny thing is, is like, that like, had it not been that way. What a great show, <laughs> you know, yeah, like oh, yeah, what, right? what a bill you had. I mean, I didn't really care yeah. about Kingdom Come, but you had Dokken, you had Metallica, you had the Scorpions, you had Van Halen, right. am I missing somebody? No, no that's there was, a, five. was the five yeah. of them. But that, yeah. great, just great, oh, yeah. especially at that time when that kind of a bill of big bands like that was pretty rare. It's not saying it never happened. Wait. Obviously, Woodstock, you know, Mamas and the Papas, <laughs> things like that happened, but metal yeah other not not a lot of that you know it was kind of because that was that was van halen 5150 metallica's injustice for all right just before like just before for injustice all. yeah they yeah. did harvester of so, sorrow that was the only justice song yeah. they did um so and it was, it was like a lot of lot and the of, scorpions were hot at that time right right doc and coming off of dream warriors yeah that kind of stuff you know it's crazy so it was like would have been great time. but anyways yeah, i had to tell you that when i was down like, it was all right but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It but funny. it didn't matter. You were already burnt. You couldn't move. You were like, I can't even move. I'm so I, I, all the energy zapped out of me. It's like, yeah, but it's cool. And there's a nice breeze, and you're just like, doesn't matter. Just can't sing <laughs> anymore. Your voice is hag- it's just yeah. terrible, man. It was, oh my god. Yeah. So, so um, speaking of old so time stuff, I kind of wanted to talk today about magazines, right? Magazines, because like if you're young and listen to this show. Or if you're old and you're nostalgic, you know, <laughs> before the internet, really, and even like, I'd say before the year 2000, because the internet between like 97 and 2000, people could get on the web and everything and find stuff, but it wasn't, as everybody knows that's listening, it wasn't great back then. It was dial up, right. you know, and it was a right. lot of um, just bad websites. <laughs> You know, yeah. take forever for a picture to load as it slowly scrolls down the screen as you're waiting for it to right. appear, and no video, and I don't know if people were really making money. I mean, somebody was, but there was a lot of there was a lot of things being bankrolled. Like this is the future, you know, and people pouring money into stuff. But it, you know, it it took a while for it to really click in. But so before all that, you know, if you were if you were into something. You'd have to get magazines. And I remember right. when, when you know, and we're not talking comic books here. I mean, there were magazines that were comic books like Savage Sword of Conan and stuff. But let's not get into that. Yeah. No. But but in terms of like, like, like being into like music, right? There were a right. bunch of different 
freaking music magazines hit parader mm-hmm. rip um metal edge <laughs> circus right right remember circus yeah. that one was the best <laughs> And, um, yeah, and there were, there was a divide there. Some were like glam magazines, like just, you know, full of glam bands, mostly for girls, really. Cir- and then was there was, say, Circus wasn't full of glam bands. No, but like Hit Parader, <laughs> that was. Um, Hip. Oh, okay. Uh, but then you had like Rip, <laughs> which was more towards like, leaned more towards thrash metal. Yeah, they were, that, that was more of a, like a European magazine. It was like more popular over in Europe. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I know. and and like um and video games especially too. Like if you were into like playing video games, you'd have to get something like Electronic Gaming Monthly or Next Generation or something, so that you could find like right. cheat codes to games or see what games were coming out. Because how would you know? How would you know? The, right. They, there was very few commercials for video games on TV. I mean, big name games maybe, but you know, in considering how many video games got dropped. Um, on a daily basis back then from all the different developers. Like, if you didn't get a magazine or, re- or read one in a store or something, you just didn't know what was out. You didn't know. I mean, it, right. it's just there was no radio of video games. You know, like, because you could listen to radio and hear new songs from a band. Uh, right. But, but with video games, you were kind of like, it was that, or you'd rent something at, like, Blockbuster or something. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, hey, there's a game. I'll, I'll rent this for... What was it like five dollars for like a two days or something? Two nights or and something, they, yeah. They'd get you like on late fees. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the late fees of video rental. But everything of- back then was magazines. It was. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody had a subscription to something, whether it was Life or Time or you know, You're Golfer's right. Digest or Reader's Digest or yes. you know what I mean. It's like there was always something you know? yeah, for whatever you were into. There was a magazine yeah. for it. High times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could right? even though Mad it was magazine. Like super illegal to like have weed back in those days, like in the eighties, for instance, <laughs> right. years, you could totally get a magazine all about weed. <laughs> you like, <you're> like porn? <laughs> Freedom of speech. They got right? magazines for that. <laughs> right. But, but you know, I mean it was like um and there would be what that publisher's clearinghouse thing where people could, you know, yeah. subscribe to different magazines and you end up with like <laughs> shit that you didn't care about, like field and stream and stuff. Cause you thought yeah, yeah. that you would try to win that stupid prize that nobody actually ever yeah. won. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> guns and ammo. Guns and ammo. Right. <laughs> right. Soldier of fortune. My mom used to send me yeah. cooking magazines. Um, that I never used, uh, because they were, always needed some sort of ingredient that no one has, you know, purple saffron, yeah. saffron from, you know, Jamaica or something. You're like, oh, where am I going to find this? I live in Cleveland. What the fuck? Right. Uh, it's right. so stupid. But no, but, you know, the, yeah. That was going to say that that's the significance of magazines from back in the day. It's like you would buy a magazine and then you would roll it up, put it in your back pocket or whatever, or carry it around with you. And you would take it everywhere you went and you would show all your friends, like, look at this picture, look at this article, right. here's here's this, here's that, here's, you know what I mean? That's, or you'd and, cut it and out and hang like, it on the locker or hang it up at home. Oh, yeah, yeah. All, I mean, all the yeah. time. I mean, that's just, that that's, was what you did. That's why I, that's why I got called gay. I mean, play, um, <laughs> as posters. Um, oh, right. That's, that's Bailey. Um, but no, like, uh, Playboy, you know, like you were saying porn, right. like that was, Huge thing. Right. I mean, they were paying people what a million do- girls a million dollars in some places for some celebrities right. to just post nude or topless or something. It's like big deal now. Right. Like who cares? <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Because it's all over. You know. I mean, it's it's just everywhere. I mean, there's sex tapes yeah. and shit from celebrities now. Like you know, yeah. seeing a celebrity nude, like whoop a doo. Um, but that was a thing. Like you, if you wanted to see that, it wasn't on TV. There's no internet. Right. You weren't getting it in the mail. Like. Forget all that shit, too. Like, if you're young and you look back, like, pre-VHS even, and you hear, like, oh, people had stag films and shit. Nobody had projectors and shit at home. I don't know who <laughs> that was that, you know, the, the movies are always like, you know, there's some guy with a projector in his house. Who, who had that? Nobody had that. The, the projector was the VCR of its time. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, Where does it get the, the, the reel of film from somebody? You can't copy it. I I always like the people who had like the slide projector. Yeah, like, come on over. We're going to look at slides, and you're just like, "What? 
Like, why can't you just show me pictures? You got pictures? Just give me, you know. My mom left me a bunch of slides, too, and I think a slide projector. I have it, I think. But, um, yeah, I'm never going to hook it up. I mean, what am I going to do with it? I don't know. I know you can buy right. something that sort of digitizes slides, but I think even those are probably becoming rare because they're not really, I mean, what for, you know? Right. It's so crazy. Um, yeah. But, no, uh, yeah, and, and um, people used to, like, hawk magazines around and try and sell you magazines that come to your door and <laughs> right. want you to buy the magazines and call you. I mean, it was work had magazine and, and don't get me wrong. There's still magazines out today. Like you're probably thinking in your head, dude, there's still magazines. I go to the store and there's magazines. There are, right. but right. there's nowhere near what it used to be. I mean, it was insane. No. I mean, it was right. like the web on paper. Like there was just so yeah. many freaking, I mean, I think there was a magazine about vomiting that Oz and, <laughs> and Ron were talking about getting or something. Like, I mean, there was a magazine Probably. for freaking everything. Uh, yeah. Just, it's just, in, it just insane. And um, I, used to, I used to get Guitar Player magazine. Right. Oh, sure. You get when I, was, when I was playing my guitar. Songs on there and stuff. Right. They had songs in it and stuff and articles. I'd, I, I would like read the articles and they'd be like, what kind of equipment do you use? And they'd start talking about their equipment. And I'd just be like, no, that's not what I want to hear. I'm like, I don't, I don't care about, what am I going to do? Go out and buy the same equipment you got? I can't even afford a guitar. <laughs> so. And, and like news magazines, because like, I don't know, newspaper wasn't enough. So you'd have to get time or Newsweek or U.S. News or something, you know, <laughs> and nowadays weekly. everything's, I see that's a, I liked entertainment weekly. That I was think a, a lot of one. people did because at that time. That's how you found out about new shit coming out. You know what I mean? All the new movies coming out. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now everything's digitized. Right. And, and mag most magazine subscriptions or most magazine companies have, have been like, well, you know what? They're getting you get you getting the same information on the Internet for free from some clickbait website. Right. You know, it, it's just like they're like, what are we supposed to do? Why is somebody going to pay us the information to tell them about? Pam and Tommy Lee or whatever, if right. everybody already knows about it. It's like um, uh, I, like with movies, right? I used to watch on TV, what was that, At the Movies with Ebert and Siskel or whatever? Or yeah, Siskel yeah. Ebert. And um, yeah. Uh, I would watch these review things because they would often have like um, uh, what's coming up next week or whatever and talk about other movies that are coming out. And that's kind of a lot of the times... Because it's not like when I was a kid, I was able to afford to go to the movies all the time. So I, right. how else am I going to know if any of these movies are any good? I mean, I think like the, the the paper had what Friday magazine. So on Friday there was a magazine in the newspaper. It was just a newspaper magazine. I don't know how to describe it, and uh, it would show you like movie times, and there would be some reviews for like movies that were out, and there would also be some concert type information in there and stuff, and then. We of course had Scene Magazine, which is uh, was a free magazine that was just like I think uh, like most cities have them. Yeah, most, most I think ma most major cities have that one. It's like a weekly free paper magazine type of thing yeah. for like tourists and stuff, so that the it, it has all the information about what's going on around town. Like all the advertisers are like restaurants and businesses. You know, I think most, yeah, most Strangest people thing, that. man. I'll tell you what. When I was in California, when I was a kid, so this is like back in like the um, late eighties, right? And um, I don't know, I don't know what the deal is with this, and maybe I could look it up, but I'm not even sure what to search on. But um, <laughs> when I would uh, walk down major major roads, because like I would go from like my mom's housing development, which was sort of near the Los Angeles airport, and I would walk down a major thoroughfare. And then head towards like a shopping center area, right? Play yeah. some video games at Radio Shack um, or uh, go to the grocery store, whatever. Anyway, yeah. on, the, on the street, right, they had, um, you know, those newspaper boxes, you know, that you see right. where, you know, you can even today, wherever you can put some money in, open it up, take out a newspaper. And of course, in my brain as a kid, I'm like, why do people only take one? <laughs> you know? Right, right. Like, there's a stack of papers in there. You can put you can put your money in. You could take out all the papers. It's the honor system. I Kevin. suppose it was, but that's. So <laughs> I've always kind of wondered about that. Maybe that's why there's not that many of them anymore. But that's why they're always empty. But there were there were porn magazines in 
um, machines, okay. right? And they huh. were they were everywhere, and um, and a lot of them I think were free, and you could just like open it up and you could pull the the paper out of there, and um, but I cannot. First of all, I wasn't that interested in it because I I hadn't hit puberty yet. <laughs> Okay, so right. I just, you know, I mean, it would be funny to me as a kid. Like, hey, hey look at this. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a kid. You yeah. don't care, you know? But um, I, I should really it's maybe, horrible. like, my brother, he has a terrible memory for things, so he would probably just not remember then make something up if I asked him about it. But um, I'm sure people out there probably <laughs> remember. I, it's just that I, I don't know what that was all about because, like, in Vegas, you know, they'll hand you things for call girls. Like, wherever you yeah, go in yeah, Vegas yeah. – you're getting constantly like handed pamphlets with, or like yeah for for escorts and, whatever. Um, I've never partaked in an escort. I don't know what the the process is in that. You know, uh, I'd love no. to have somebody on that has done that just Partaking. just so I could understand the process because I'm not quite sure how that even works. Like I know how it works in like movies and shit right <laughs> like there's some girl yeah. that's like on the street she's like hey baby you know and then she's like you want to go it'd be like 50 bucks or something you know and then the guy's like all right or whatever but calling an escort place it's kind of like like how do you know that you're like that you're gonna get sex right and they're just or they're just com- coming over to be an escort i don't know like what's the what's that process about like how do you how do you negotiate well, that Oh, do you know? Here's what happened. All right, no, I, I was going to say. Well, first of all, what you do is you call them, and then what they do is they get your. They tell you that uh, they want your phone number, and they will call you back in a few minutes. And then they call you back in a few minutes, and then they ask what you're interested in and what you would like. But see, I think if you and, because you might be a cop, so you might just be right, like, well, I want to get my, I want to get a blowjob or something, and then they'll be like, you know, they'll hang up on you. I'm sure, right? Yeah. I, I mean, no, so, that's why they. That's why they get your number. That's why they get their number, well, your number, know, and call you or something like that. I, I can't remember what the process. I mean, yeah, but I mean, they can get a bullshit phone. Uh, nah, see, that's what I'm saying. I'd I'd like to talk to somebody who's actually done because I I just think that there's there's a process. There's something I, I don't. I'm not going to do it. I, <laughs> I have no, no, no interest no. in that. Zero interest. Trust me. Um, but uh, I've always been kind of curious about it. I guess it's always that that it's a weird thing, and I know plenty of people that probably have done it but people don't talk about it too that's like a thing like i i, I know some sketchy people don you know some sketchy yeah, yeah. people we probably know some oh, people that have done it but people don't yeah. talk about it so something they don't talk about at least nobody i know yeah. that does um yeah, people do some messed up stuff right so it's like i don't know about that um <laughs> yeah but anyway Back to magazines. Magazine. So that was just kind of a weird thing in <laughs> California where they, they just had these um these porn mags like on the street. Like you would think like that couldn't happen here in Cleveland. Like people would lose their fucking minds. You know what I mean? Like right. what do you mean there's free porn on the street? Holy cow you know, I mean <laughs> they would just flip yeah, right. you know. I mean it just it's a it's weird that the the lifestyle difference. And yeah, we're a major city, but Forget about it, man. It's not going to happen here. I mean, it would, you might as well be trying to do it in Salt Lake with the Mormons and shit around. Like, it's just not going to fly. But out, out oh, west, yeah, people don't care. I don't know. They might. I mean, some people do. <laughs> but I guess it's just not a it's not a significant number or something. I don't know. I don't know. Liberty. Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Do what you want, I guess. Yeah, right? Jerks. Just don't hurt anybody. Crazy, crazy people. All right. It was just my yeah, anyways. montage of magazine talk. But um Yeah, well Did you watch Miss Marvel? No. Yeah, I didn't either. I Is read it some, on? Yeah. I read some people talking oh. about it, but um it seemed like It's uh, getting rear view bombed. Well it's it's something. weird. Like the, the 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 people that actually read the comic don't like that they change her powers around. I read that. Oh, they're, yeah. they're they're mad about that. They said she's kind of like Green Lantern now or something, which is, yeah. you know, a different character, clearly, but different right. universe. But um, then the people that kind of just went into it that seemed like the kind of people that would have liked um, Moon Knight, <laughs> right? Yeah, so the, right. So the, so the group that likes Moon Knight really likes Miss Marvel, right? So that's yeah. that group 
the, I think Disney that could, tracks. The, uh, yeah, Disney could make a Marvel thing about a piece of shit with a cape, and those people would like it. That's what I think. Like they're just all in on Marvel every day. Like, fine, if that's you know what, that's what you enjoy. Well, who who the hell am I? But I just. And so then there's other people that are just like, this looks like a bad kid show, or um, this is something that, you know, is worse than what the CW puts out, et cetera. Right. And I think, like, that would probably be the camp I would fall in. And listen, I'm not knocking this girl that's playing it or any of the characters on the no. show. I, I don't have any problems, because I haven't watched it. I'm not interested in yeah. in the I can't in, knock what I haven't seen. Right. I, I know <laughs> that, you know, no, nothing like that. I just, this character is not interesting to me at all. And it does come across, I watched the preview, does come across to me as kind of like a kid's show. And um, yeah, I'm I'm 50. I just don't feel like watching a kid's show. <laughs> so it's, yeah. the Marvel is and Disney are dumbing down this stuff enough where they're practically all kid shows when you watch them. But um, uh, this is even more so. So yeah, I'm, I'm steering away from it. Did, uh, go ahead. Real quick, did you did you watch the Kenobi? I did. I wasn't gonna, but I mean, it's just it's it's only thirty minutes on a Wednesday. I, just put myself through it. I, I wasn't going to either, but I did, and I was talking to Clint, whatever, a couple of days ago, <clears throat> and he goes, "So I haven't watched the fourth episode of Ob- Obi Wan Kenobi." He's like, "Do I do I do I need to bother?" <laughs> and I was and I was like. I go, I wouldn't. And I said, oh, wait a minute. I did watch it. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I didn't watch it, but I read like spoiler. Like I saw like spoiler reports and stuff. And uh, he's like, uh, the one was like, the headline was like major character uh, dies in episode four of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm standing there and I just went, and I just went blank. And I was just like, someone did. And, and he's like, well, that's what the article said. It said something about somebody being dead or whatever. And I was like, huh. And I sat there for like a good two minutes going, yeah, you know what? I don't remember. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and this was like literally a couple of days after watching it. He was like, so what happened in the in the, the fourth episode? And I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I was like, I, I, I think they got away. So cool, <laughs> you know man. what I mean? I'm the same way. It's like, I, I'm the same right. way. I tune out, man. I can't pay attention to it. I know. Yeah, it's on. He's I'm like, there. It's on. I'm just, just not. He's mentioned in the spoiler, or that's what it was. He goes, he goes. I watched the first half of the episode, but I didn't watch the rest of it. I just shut it off because I thought it was rubbish. He goes, and then he goes, and then I, and then I read this article, and he's like, so now I'm wondering if I missed something in the last ten minutes, and that's what I couldn't remember. I was like. Honestly, I don't even remember how the episode ended. Like, I don't, I don't know. And uh, oh, I forgot where I was going with it. Never mind. Go ahead. No, I know <laughs> you're you're right because I, I I'm I'm unfortunately right there with you. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it was kind of like uh, Leia was. I'm like something like, happened. Hostage. They got away. She was being interrogated. Like they decided to interrogate a ten year old girl. Um, but they couldn't. <laughs> That's the, that's the thing. It's like that chick. The chick's like, I'm super strong, and I'm going to interrogate you. And the kid's just sitting there staring at her, and she's like, Oh my god, you're strong. And it's like, she's a kid. <laughs> she's, what are you talking about? And it's just, it's just so. It's like it's <laughs> so like it goes back to what you said last week. We know Leia's not going to die. We know Obi Wan's right. not going to die. You know, we know Vader's yeah. not going to die. It, it's just, <laughs> it, you know, I mean. Uh, it, it's so inconsequential what's going on here. I, I really don't get yeah. the point of this at all. I mean, they're not even stealing the plans like in Rogue One. It's just a side story that's not really interesting or very good. Um, I, yeah. I saw an article I saw an article that said uh, I saw an article that was saying uh, did uh, what's his name? Uncle Owen? Is that his name? Owen? Yeah. 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 They're, they're like, did Uncle Owen know that Anakin Skywalker was Darth Vader and you like read this article and it's like due to the latest episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi which was like episode 2 or 1 or 3 or whatever it was they're like due to the latest episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi we did find out that he had no idea that Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker and I'm sitting there thinking I'm like who cares like it doesn't matter because my thing here you know what I don't understand 
<laughs> if Darth Vader was looking for his son, wouldn't you go to your family first? Like, wouldn't you be like, you know what? I'm going to go over to my remember, remember my brother Owen, <laughs> remember, right? Because that's who it is, right? It's Luke's uncle, which means he was Vader's brother or Leia's. So they had to, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's or what? I mean, uh, the other side of the family. Um, the woman, oh, Padma, Padma, yeah. But here's the thing: the kids walking, Luke's running around as a Skywalker. No, you ever I, think about this? I mean, it's listen. Yes, it, it's, <laughs> here we go. We're here. I'm sorry, I said this on a whole trip. No, anyway, that's, that's what I was thinking. Was like, if he's growing up as Luke Skywalker, they're like, we're hiding him from Darth Vader on Tatooine with his aunt and his uncle, and uh, it's like, okay, so. So it's, it's like so it's like Vader doesn't know anything about his family or her family or how how to find out in the in the space in space where they have all kinds of holograms and communication processes and all this stuff. He's like, I don't know. I have no way of looking up what her family members are. And if there's somebody just walking around like, hey, look at that Skywalker kid. Don't you think that would tip him off? Like he'd be like in his head, be like, who? Like who? There's a Skywalker somewhere. Send it. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just dumb. No, it's hundred percent. I mean, like, oh. it, 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 the whole it's just yeah, the lore is all screwed up. Uh, it's it's just a mess. I <laughs> I think last week I talked about I was watching or the Orville on Hulu. Um, yeah, people out there, if you have Hulu and you never watched the Orville, if you liked Star Trek: The Next Generation, that era, like Deep Space Nine, yeah, later Voyager, Orville is With better the- than most of the stuff that's on Paramount right now. That's trying to be Star Trek. Although Strange New Worlds isn't too bad, but um, it's probably going to spin off the rails like Discovery did and Picard. Um, uh, it's like it's uh, what's it called? Uh, it's like Star Trek with a little bit of Seth MacFarlane in it. Yeah, and it's now if you if you never watched it, the the very be- and we talked about this, but at the very beginning, it's more comedy than anything else. You're like, this is just a. It's kind of like you're thinking it's going to be like. Um, what was that movie with um uh, oh the with Tim Allen yeah where they were uh I just watched it like two weeks ago oh my god it's a good movie I know which one you're talking it's about yeah it's a great movie um yeah and Alan Rickman right uh um Galaxy Quest yeah Galaxy Quest at first you'll think like it's kind of like a Galaxy Quest ripoff or something it's got some jokes but it was apparently as I read this thing about it like and, and Seth MacFarlane had like um done that kind of on purpose he kind of sold it as that and then yeah. once the network bought in then he turned it serious and like we talked about it last week but um if you never get a chance to watch it if you like because once it gets serious it gets really good actually um and it still has a bite of humor to it like donnie just said there's some seth MacFarlane, yeah. but it's actually better star trek than star trek is right now that's how i see it um, it's, yeah. just, it's just an all around pretty decent show. So it's worth a watch. I liked, I liked the, I watched what did they have the first two seasons on Fox. Yeah. Right. And this, yeah. Okay. This, so I saw the, I saw the first two. Right. And then this is like a new one. That's uh, only on, um, Hulu, Hulu. And, uh, um, it's called, it's basically called all three seasons are on there, but the third season's called the Orville new horizons. And, um, it may be the last season because um, Seth MacFarlane is trying to do something with some property he has called Ted. I don't know, but they let all of the all of the oh, rest Ted. of the yeah I don't know all the rest of the, that's the bear. Oh yeah, right. You're right. Now I know what. <laughs> I guess he's going to make a series with Ted. Oh, um, so there's some focus on that right now. I don't know. I doubt Wahlberg will be in it, but who knows with his career? Um, you just get Bill Burr to do it. But yeah, somebody with a Boston accent. Right. But um anyway, they they you know the contracts for the rest of the crew were were um let go. So they didn't renew anybody's contracts. But oh. McFarlane said that um you know, if they want to do a season 4, he's got ideas for this and that cuz Norm McDonald um is in this season, you know, he plays a character on the show and um he's now passed away. So they were talking about what would happen with season four, and he was talking about that. So I think it could happen, but it'll probably be out. And they're basically saying it has to do with the ratings. So, hey, if you got Hulu, watch it. It's a good show. 
Yeah. It's uh, it's worth your time. If you like I enjoyed it. If you like science fiction shit, you know, like the Star Trek and stuff. Um I I can't watch Discovery. I watch Strange New Worlds. I watch Picard, but Picard is it's just it's just so it's too it started Picard. out it started out pretty good. It started out pretty good. Second second season started out good. You had Q on there, you had the Borg, you had of uh, the Borg of the future, basically. Um and then you had them going back through time to change something in the timeline, but then it gets all kitschy and like everybody becomes a family and there's romance and seven of nine is a lesbian. And, and it's just like, I'm, I, I'm just like, it just spins off the rails again. Like, it's like, what are you doing? Like, I, like you're, you're trying to cover like every like cultural, um, uh, process. This is something Star Trek, Paramount Star Trek screws up all the time is that they're trying to fit in like every cultural significant thing they can. That's like in, right. you know, popularity. Like if you go back to Voyager, they tried to have every, like they were trying to make the crew like so interracial. It's freaking ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> the, the, the white woman as a captain, you had the Chakotay Indian guy as her, her, um, number one, you got, um, the, 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 I don't know. What was he? Japanese or Korean? Um, Kim, uh, in engineering, you've got the black Vulcan. Um, you've got the Puerto Rican half Klingon girl there too. Plus the white guy that drives the ship. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Like I get it that it's like the world is multicultural. Don't get me wrong. And, and, but it was just like, you could see it just oozing out of Voyager. Like, you know, how, what, what they were trying to do here. And you're just like, it's, it was just like transparent. And that's kind of what they keep doing. They just keep like, instead of being a science fiction show, they're trying to, you know, um, be that thing where Kirk, you know, was the first guy to kiss a black woman on TV. So, Hey, Star Trek broke ground back in the sixties. So let's keep doing that by, you know, uh, putting every, every cultural thing. I mean, it's just, I don't know. So it annoys me. I guess I'm getting old and crabby, but it's like, it doesn't further the storylines. You know, it doesn't expand the characters really anywhere. It's just like, there's a bunch of guys in a writing room being like, let's be, let's, Let's let's twist things up, you know, and it's like, eh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's be super annoying. Get it piss everybody off. Let's just you know, let's just add everything. Like just it doesn't have to be traditional or anything, I guess. I, I, I don't care. Just like I didn't care about Kirk kissing Uhura like when I was a kid. You know, I didn't watch it as a kid and go like oh, right. you know what I mean? Like, oh no, you didn't. You know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. care at all. I didn't, it didn't even register. I didn't know that Sulu was Japanese or something. You know what I mean? Nobody brought that shit up. It's not like he went into like Sulu's room and it was all like, this is where I practice my meditation to the um, uh, Shinto, uh, the gods of Japan, which my culture is enjoying. Like nobody, you know what I mean? Like nobody did that shit back then. Like, you know, and they tried to do it later with Ohura, like in the movies. Like where they were like, oh, she's president of Africa, and um, you know, they went to her like thing or whatever, and she had like African shit everywhere, and I, it just it just feels like like you just, it's fine, it, but it's like you, you got the one black character on the show, and then she's like super into Africa too, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like really? How, like, come how on, ironic. Like, can you just be like? I mean, it, it would be like. You know, I mean, I guess they did with Scotty. You'd go into Scotty's thing and, you know, you'd have a kilt on with bagpipes or something. Like, I just, it's just, yeah. it's just fucking, it just, it, that kind of shit just You're irritates right. me. Just, everybody just be normal, man. Just be fucking normal. Can't you all just be in the regular shit? Like, I don't know. You don't hear me complaining. It's just, <laughs> it's just talking about Scotty. He was always angry. Yeah. He's always, you know, they're always like, Scotty, do this. He's like, oh, for Christ's sake, I can't do that. <laughs> he had it's a like, bad, fake ass Scottish accent anyway. Um, hey. But, uh, hey, you know, uh, fake. Yeah. Yeah. They used to get, they used to complain about it. That's fake. He used to fake it and he did a poor job at it. He's not yeah, actually very good. Um, Hey, listen, man, I know. And you know, do him, but listen, no, I don't. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure he is, but it's not from Scotland. He doesn't have an actual Scottish accent. Uh, yeah. Right. 
Yeah. My Scottish accent's way better than his. Yeah. And they Listen here, Captain, I can't do anything. The bad robot ones or whatever, and they got a real Scottish guy. But, um... The, the anyway, giant lithium crystal. I, I'm just, I, I, I realize I'm just kind of old and crusty, and the world cares about these things now, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's just that I find it, like, it's totally fine if it furthers the storyline along... I, I like it when they when there's intelligent writing and they do things that make sense, you know, or yeah. they do things where there's like a um a, a conflict. Like let's say Seven of Nine's lesbian, okay? And you know, she decides that with her Borg life that she's she's lesbian. Like it would be interesting. <laughs> it would be interesting, I think, to to people involved if she was struggling with that identity. And she was deciding about how to um, come to terms with it and, you know, how to embrace it, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, maybe that would, like, fulfill the character. But just to have her just suddenly, like, just kiss the other woman and hold hands with her near the end of the show because that's just seemed like a, a lesbian thing now. It's just, yeah. it's a, that's when I'm just watching it and I'm just like, that's just, like, why? Like, why does it matter? <laughs> Like why did he, that's uh, the move? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't that's, know. That's the move. You just hold hands and kiss somebody. <laughs> just, and the next thing I you know, know like, I know what I'm trying to say, and I'm not great at saying. <laughs> it. All right, I don't have any problem no. with what they're doing. It's as people, I have a problem with the no, narrative. Yeah. The narrative is what yeah. kills me. It's not done in a classy way. It's just cheap. That's, that's fan like, service, as I like to say. My my girlfriend will watch these shows. And they're good. There's some good shows. It's got some good writing and some good stories and stuff like that. But as you know, Hollywood or whatever television, they they, they tend to come back to the same tropes, yeah. the same oh, yeah. ideas, and the yes. same storylines. And we'll be sitting there watching shows, and I'll just be like, something will happen. I'll be like, well, that dude's the bad guy. And it's like she likes to watch shows over and over again. Like she watches the same shows over and over again. And I'll be like, well, that dude's a bad guy. Or something, I'll be like, that guy's going to that guy's gonna go to jail. And she'll look at me and be like, How do you know that? Like, you haven't watched this yet. And I go, <laughs> I just know. Because you, <laughs> you kinda already have. You kinda have one. Because you see it. Yeah. It's like this is this is the same thing thing as everything else in between it. And right. That's how they that's how they write. They write it just like this. And they and they've always written it like this. And people have always gone to the movies and sh- watched TV shows and been like, Oh my God, you know, and it's like See that's that nothing was, new. That was the 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 weird sort of genius of Buffy the Vampire Slayer that a lot of people didn't get. But if you if you if you did watch the show, it it had this kind of genius where you had just like Donnie is talking about. You have a show like say nine hundred two one zero, right? About a bunch of right. teenagers that are rich or whatever. But they have all of the tropes that are going on. The one kid's going through his parents getting divorced. The one other kid's got, he's addicted to alcohol. He becomes an alcoholic for an episode, right. you know. Um, somebody gets addicted to painkillers or something. Like, that would be today, I suppose. Um, it, it, th- th- there's all of those things, right? I mean, just, you, if you sat around and thought about them all, one guy gets into a car accident. Is he going to make it? You know, all that sort of stuff. And what Buffy would do is they would do the, Joss Whedon would write it, but he would write, he would take those tropes and he would make them sort of vampire themed, you know? So yeah. like yeah. there would be like an episode on 90210 where like maybe Kelly went out with a boy and he tried to like rape her, you know? And and yeah. uh, so, you know, on Buffy, she would go out and the guy would turn out to be a vampire and try to rape her, right? Or, yeah. or you know. Somebody her neck. right on 90210 would would um, get addicted to cocaine or something, and then on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, you know Xander would drink a potion that made him like re- have a lot of energy, you know, and and he would become like uh, addicted to the potion with the energy in it and stuff. And while that sounds kind of lame, it's it was just written in a way that was real tongue in cheek towards those tropes, and it was, yeah. it was really kind of funny about that show. Um, because it would it would take that stuff and kind of wink at you that you know television's always doing the same thing. So here's our version of it, you know. 
And yeah. uh, because you're right, like the the writers go to the same well of story all the time, and they just pull out and they they try and change it. But we've seen it. If you've watched, you know, twelve shows in your life, you've seen every which right. way they can do it. You know, so it's just like, oh, I've seen this before. These characters are going to do the same thing. It's just going to be a little bit different. You know, instead of her in right. the hospital, she's going to be at you know. Um, some sort of other facility, you know, a rehab center or something like it's just, right. It, it's always, it's always that way. Yeah. And that's the problem with network TV too, is the, is that network TV, because it has commercials, they have to write the, the, the episodes in sort of like a 12 minute arc. So, you know, you got to come out of commercial break. You got to put some, put some like f- fill in whatever, just, you know, that you had to from whatever just happened before the commercial break. And then you got like a, like a five or six minutes in there where you can have the characters like talk or do whatever. And then you got to have like a build up at the end of that 12 yeah. minutes so that people will hang on after the commercials. So something has to happen. I mean, you can't just end it. Like you can't just go into commercial where they're just like, "Oh, what'd you have for lunch today?" Well, I had a hot dog, you know. And then it's yeah, the right. commercial time, and because you, you, people will wake up, people will be like, "Well, this is fucking stupid. I'm gonna shut this off and go do something else." You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it's yeah. just like um, uh, Oak Island, where they're like, you know, coming up on Oak Island, and they gotta like tempt you to keep watching it, you know. But it, like t- shows before they even did that coming up because you, they had to do something to liven up Oak Island. But if you watch a television right. show that like that twelve minute arc, they're always trying to like hook you at the end. So when you're writing that, you've got to come up with shit all the time, you know, on every episode, like every twelve minute arc, you got to sit there and come up with uh, some some hook to to bring people yeah. back. And it's always like you know you see it all the time, like a car is about to slam into the other car, and then it cuts to the commercial or. Or somebody's getting shot at, and you don't know if they got shot or not. It was a commercial, or you know, yeah. it, it's always that way, and it's it's like real, it's like real cheap, but it's it's just been going on since television began. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about the? Um, Fine. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was I wasn't saying anything. I was just saying, like, remember, like in the late seventies, early eighties, um, TV shows used to be performed in front of a live studio audience. Remember that? Right. Like, I think yeah. maybe people were tired of laugh tracks, and so then they were like, well, let's get a real audience in here to laugh, even though right. I'm pretty sure they still use laugh tracks, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it just didn't, it just seemed real cute audience type stuff, but I always, yeah. I always thought it was weird, like, like what, because they stopped doing it for the most part, like most of the shows in the 80s as you went forward weren't filmed in front of a live studio audience, but Right at the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s, a lot of those shows were. It was kind of weird. I, Happy yeah. Days is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Like, I mean, you would hear that I think, all the time. Because all the old shows, they all have laugh tracks. Right. And there's people there's people who are like, uh, laugh track. Uh, uh, uh. And it's like, I don't even really notice it. Like, when I hear the laughing on the TV show, like the Munsters. Like the Munsters would have a laugh track, you know what I mean? Where Herman would be like, oh, Lily, and, ha, 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 and everybody laughs. And it's just like, that's kind of, it just always seems strange that like the like the, the live studio audience, that made sense. You could hear it. It sounded, it was different every time. There right. wasn't, it wasn't one, whereas the laugh track was, it was the same thing. Right. Every 30 seconds or every, you yeah. know what I mean? Every minute and a half, they'd right. tell a joke and ha, 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 ha. And it's like, I'm watching the Munsters. Do I need to hear people laughing? That doesn't. It does. It, it just. Well, it didn't. The problem it didn't is, work. And even today, they still do it, right? I mean, you can still watch shows that yeah. do it, and the shows that do it, a lot of those jokes aren't funny. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're just they're falling flat, but they add the laugh track. And I and I swear, people like my brother. No offense, Brian, but people like my brother fall for that. Like he listens. Like he he his brain hears other he people hears laughing, it. and he thinks right. it's funny. You know, that's why he likes reaction videos on YouTube so much. You know, he likes watching the people like laughing. And and I can't quite explain to my brother that, you know, they're faking it too (laughs) because they're looking looking for, you know, people like my brother to watch the videos thinking it's funny so that they can make money. 
you know so they're right. they're uh exaggerating the just like laugh tracks do the, the laughs with their reaction videos but even early you know and real quick early yeah, yeah. in television's life right so like when television first started like in the late 40s um it was around in world war ii but it was like very few people had it um right and uh but as it grew out into like somewhere around the 50s there was no recording mechanism they didn't have a way to record video so they all tv was, was live. live yeah yeah and and so you couldn't really you i think they may add laugh tracks at some point live too but you basically everything was you know you had a studio audience then but then eventually it yeah. switches to being studio stuff and then you know they get the laugh track and then they i guess it was just an experiment with the live studio audience because they they pretty much abandoned that not everything like talk shows carson or you know um yeah. Corbear and uh, that that kind of thing today um they, they all have studio audiences you know but um I, uh, sitcoms no not really not so much like that like the honeymooners would have been a live show and there probably yes. would have been an audience right Absolutely. but that but that's the thing is if you've ever watched an, an episode of the honeymooners it's pretty much shot all in their apartment yeah or you know right. what i mean there's there's never there's never any well, cut those scenes old to a different... school, yeah those old school actors it was probably all one cut you know what i mean like yeah. probably yeah. other than if they did they did some something i mean it was probably like let's go and they just did a 30 minute or whatever it was you know between whatever their commercial breaks was back then right one or two commercials they probably just did a whole run because that's just how actors were back then a lot of um, right. spontaneity um uh, yeah i don't know i don't know i, and I then, it's just kind of interesting laugh tracks well in fact and, and then kind of what you were saying about how like your brother is like he watches the reaction videos because he laughs when other people laugh right and all that stuff there if you if you it it, it it even that even seeps into the the whole idea of laugh tracks making people laugh so that people laugh at your show and at your jokes and stuff like that that even seeps into stand-up comedy if you've ever watched a, a comedian that you've seen not all comedians will chuckle or laugh at their own jokes right if right. it's a good one right if it's a good one most comedians will laugh because yeah. at the whole because the crowd is actually laughing and they'll be laughing first because he'll you know like the comedian will will say the punchline people start laughing and then they'll probably be like you know how they like drop the microphone or they drop their head just <laughs> like oh my god that was i can't believe it, you know yeah but the comedians you, you you'll see stand-up comedians who are bombing who are like telling their jokes and the people aren't getting them and then so as soon as they say the punchline they start ha 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 and I never realized it until I thought of, until I, I I got this whatever you want to call it. Then I, I figured it out. I was like, oh my god, because I've seen so many people do like open mics. Uh, you know, I ran those open mics for years, and I would see guys go up there, and they would tell a joke, and then they would laugh. Right. And then they'd go to their next joke, and they would laugh, and they would go to the next joke, and they would. Laugh. But nobody in the crowd would laugh, and they would. It was like. You'd be sitting there staring at the guy, like, "Why are you laughing after every joke?" You like, we're supposed to laugh, right? You're not, but that's what they were doing is they were trying to laugh so that the people in the crowd would be like, "Oh, that's where we're right. supposed to laugh." They would laugh. You See, know? that was one of the problems I had with the loading bar when I was doing that with Corey and them, is the fact that like, um, uh, part of what we were doing it wasn't fake laughter. I don't want to make it sound like that because there were some things on the show that are genuinely funny that we would talk about and, and everything, but it was a lot of like, if it wasn't upbeat enough, let's say Corey would stop us and we would have to start again. And I huh. found that terribly annoying, especially coming out of VGN, which we were, everything was off the cuff. You know, we'd ever did that. Right. Um, right. But here it was like, if the, if the tone of the show wasn't right, if people weren't laughing, um, and, 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 uh, following through with, you know, uh, stop and, and let's do it again kind of thing. Right. And, uh, I just, I, I, I really had a hard time with that. And I, and I get, that'd be the worst. Yeah. I, it, I just, I liked to laugh at things that I thought were genuinely funny, 
because that sparked yeah. my laughter. You know what I mean? Like, just like we do this show, <laughs> like Donnie and I are yeah. not stopping the show and we're discussing like, you know, Hey Don, you know, when we were talking about Obi-Wan, we need to laugh a little bit harder during that scene. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, right, right. It's, it's not something we do. And, we, and believe me, Corey didn't say it like that. I don't want people to think like he was telling us to all laugh harder at his jokes. That never happened. I, he's a great guy. Nothing like that happened. What I'm saying though is that if he was telling jokes and none of us were laughing, he would be he would stop and be like, "All right, we gotta we gotta work on <laughs> bringing up the the tone." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we, we gotta get this just more the presentation or right. And yeah. so then it it, it becomes a, a lot of um, forced. Um, although no one says it, it becomes a lot of forced laughter. I think. And, and, and that was you know, something I wasn't into. I wonder how I would have last. I wonder how I would have been on that show because he told me I was one of the funniest motherfuckers he knows. <laughs> and yet but I've never been, been on been any all, of his he, shows. He might have been all right. I mean, it's just, you know, Jason Murphy is a really no, funny I guy have. and he would have been okay. Um, a lot of times Corey would pick on Nick, this guy from England, you know, um, and, and stuff like that would be funny. And, and Jeff was, you know, pretty upbeat, but he would be the guy that would play all the games. It's just that, um, it, I mean the cutting stuff, like him being like, "Okay, stop, let's yeah. redo that." I would have been like, "No, <laughs> like no." No, it, it was also a, um, um, oddly, it was also a more aggressive show. If you wanted to talk, like you know how hard it is to talk on BGN, especially when my brother was right. There. But you could you could do it because I would steer the conversation towards different people to give you an opportunity to say something. Where on the loading bar. Right. You kind of had to jump in, like you had to like interrupt people to, in order to talk. Yeah, and they were all cool about that, but it's it feels impolite, right? So it's not a good, it's not a natural thing to do. But everybody, you know, you get the hang of it. But I didn't talk too much on that show either because of that. I just never felt <laughs> it's like if somebody else is talking, I'm gonna let me let them talk, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to ruin their train of thought. You don't want to, you know what I mean? That's I hate that when you listen to a show with like multiple people and somebody says something, like somebody starts saying something like, "Hey, let me tell you about this da 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 da." And then somebody goes, "Hold on a second. Let me interrupt you real quick." Right. And and you're just like, "Well, no, I wanted to hear his point." You know, and it's like I I've, I've I've listened to podcasts where they go back to the guy and the guy goes, "No, nah, I completely forget." Like I say to right. you, like, there's times when I'll say, you know, we, we do it, that, like, but, but we but we try not to walk on each other. That's it, that, yeah. it's, it's it's gonna happen, right? And and we do, but I stop and I say, "Go ahead," you know what I mean? And you're like, "No, go I, on." Like we're trying not to walk. I, I make on my each little, I, right. I make my little noise. I go, uh, yeah, and then you hear that, and then you go. And right. then you, and then I let you finish your sentence. You know, you finish your thought because I know you heard my right, uh, right. And, and it's like he knows I'm, I, I got something to say. He'll finish. You finish talking, and then it, then you'd yeah. be like, "Go it's, ahead." It's you <laughs> yeah. know, and, yeah, VGN was a different thing. I mean, it was just it was more comedy than anything. And if you could if you could <laughs> speak over my brother at times, you were lucky. I mean, you know, I just no, I, I had a booming voice, so I could do it. But it's harder, you know. Um, you could mute him. I couldn't mute him. <laughs> you would you mute could be like, click. All right. Up on himself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. It's, it's oh my god. Funny. All right. We're at an hour, folks. We'll be back next week uh, with more uh -huh. um, fun stuff. I think next week we'll we'll go ahead. I'll try to remember this, and we'll check the email. And we'll see if we've gotten any. Oblast at vgn .us. If you've written something in like the last month or something. Sorry, we <laughs> haven't checked waiting. it. Um, but uh, we'll try, <laughs> Donnie. Try to remind me if you can remember. We'll try and check the yeah. email next week, and uh, we'll see what we got. All right, thanks. See you. Yeah. Peace. You've been listening to Oblast with Don and Kevin. If you'd like to write into the show, send an email to oblast at vgn .us. That is vgn as in video game news. And be sure to check out our Patreon page, which is at patreon.com forward slash VGN, where you can get all of our shows, our videos, and some musings. Uh, be sure to tune in each week for new episodes on our Patreon page or every other week on the public RSS feed that you're subscribed to now. Thanks for listening, and good night. Peace.